Hello people, Benito here. Now, this is my revision video for the Edexcel Chemistry AS Syllabus. So, um, yeah, if you're not doing Edexcel Chemistry, naff off, I've still got the view. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only joking. No, you may find it useful. So, so let's just do this. So, um, so yeah, we're basically going to be starting at the end of the unit, which of course makes complete and logical sense. Um... Through popular demand, well, I say popular demand, I mean one person, but in my world, that's a whole crowd, mate. So let's please this crowd, baby. So, let's get, let's get on with it. So, um, by the way, I'm, I'm, I, I did some chemistry ones last year. This is kind of AS now, so forgive me if I slip up a little bit. And I'm hoping to do some more revision videos as the exams get closer and we all begin to kiss ourselves a little bit more anyway so um so what w this last chapter this it seems like a lot but if you look really read it they aren't really going on about much and it's only a few key ideas which you need to get your head around and if you look at the past papers you begin to get that idea as well so basically we need to know the basics first here's the ground here's me okay I have more muscular legs than that. I go to the gym. Anyway, so here we have the, the, the we're in a section of the atmosphere called the troposphere, and there's two distinct layers here. Um, can't explain completely why, but there's a tro there's the troposphere, and then we have the stratosphere. Now the bit we're really interested in is in the stratosphere. We're talking about the ozone layer, and we're specifically we're going to be looking at how ozone is formed and how little devils uh, chemicals are prevent ozone being formed and therefore breaking down the ozone layer which i'm sure you've heard of before so ozone it's a molecule it's three atoms of oxygen it's o3 which well if you look at the electron structure doesn't seem completely natural but let's just deal with it shall we so um so yeah it's o3 what only present well most of the ozone in our earth is only present in the ozone layer so it's very very rare anywhere else it's just because of the high altitude that it's able to happen and it is stable well i say stable let's go on to that okay so ozone is formed from o2 molecules so we have o2 here which is what we're mostly familiar with and the ozone layer this reaction that we're seeing here is really really vital um so we don't get damaged by any harmful radiation which well mainly the main reason is skin cancer and we're talking uv radiation here that if loads of that got down to earth we'd all have skin cancer so um it's really really helpful uh UV, um the ozone there so yeah so, what does the UV radiation do in oxygen? How are they related? Well, the oxygen actually absorbs this UV radiation, so it prevents it from reaching Earth. And what happens? What does it do? Well, that UV radiation, it's got a high frequency. It's going to give that oxygen molecule a lot of energy. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to draw the structure, because that's the oxygen here. So that's the UV. Now that is going to give it enough energy for this molecule this bond here or these two bonds to break homolytically so they both break evenly so no iron ions are formed in this instead we get two oxygen free radicals free radicals are atoms with an unpaired electron now as they have an unpaired electron they are going to be extremely reactive okay so this is how ozone is formed the uh, oxygen radical is going to react with oxygen molecule a normal o2 molecule and as that's so reactive that's going to combine to o3 now this o3 molecule can now also absorb uv radiation break the bonds can break homolytically once again to form O2 and another oxygen free radical. 
So then the cycle start, starts again, basically. Ozone is being broken, ozone is being formed, and it's this cycle which prevents us from any UV radiation reaching Earth because it's all being absorbed by these oxygen um, molecules. I say that some UV does reach Earth, which is why, um, well, the free radical substitution reactions in Unit 1, I think, um, work here on Earth. But anyway, there are chemicals which prevent this from happening. And this was discovered quite recently in Antarctica, that the ozone layer was actually breaking down, which wasn't very good. And it's all down to CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. And we're mostly looking at the chlorine here, I think, I would presume. Yeah, I don't know whether it happens to other chemicals, but chlorine is the main culprit, I think. So, chlorine molecule. Now, one of the main problems with CFCs is that they're really, really stable. And most people thought that was a good thing. But that means they can go up into the atmosphere, you know, perfectly strong and, you know, solid structure without breaking. So they'll reach the ozone layer. This UV radiation has the enough energy to break the bonds. So it is only then when the CFC will start to fall apart. So let's look at chlorine. In fact, let's draw again the chlorine molecule. Plus UV radiation. This is the free radical substitution from unit one again, basically. So you then get two chlorine free radicals because it's breaking homolytically. Now these chlorine free radicals are even more reactive than the oxygen ones. Actually, no, they're not. Forget I said that. So. Chlorine radical plus an O3 molecule, an O3 molecule here. That is going to take an oxygen atom. So we're going to get chlorine, a chlorine oxide, I think. I think. Free radical plus O2. Because that this bond is here is going to break homolytically so we so an oxygen atom breaks off and just joins onto that one so this oxygen is the free radical it's that that's going to have the unpaired electron this chlorine's fine though but as you can see o2 is being produced here now we've got another free radical here what's going to happen with that so we have our free radical here now that is going to react with another oxygen radical, which has been formed in the main step above here. And that is going to create another chlorine radical. Because those oxygens will react together to form an O2. As you can see beautifully there. So, basically... If you look at the whole thing, on the whole, the chlorine hasn't changed at all. It was a free radical here, and at the end of the whole mechanism, it's still a free radical, so it doesn't change. In a way, you can say, you can call it a catalyst, because it's not getting used up in the reaction at all. It's just helping the reaction move across. So, the overall effects of this, God, my whiteboard's falling apart. Right, okay. Is just... O3 radical plus O3 is giving two lots of O2, which is no good because the oxygen, the ozone layer is being broken down. So um, there you go. Um, I hope to do a bit more on chemistry. It's a bloody lot to go through. So um, enjoy. <laughs> See, I hope I hope you find that useful. I find it useful for me to revise. So um, adios, amigos.